meeting is being recorded. Hi guys. Today in our business call, we're going to do some energy balancing um, for business. Okay, so we're going to find some blocks and limitations that we have um, that uh, can really help us push through and uh, serve. So first of all, I would like to talk about um, why we're doing this business. Okay, so if you kind of reiterate to yourself why you're doing this business, it will help you understand why you're trying to clear the blocks. Okay, um, so um, Karen, um, I think this is Karen, right? Um, she helped me remember um, this kind of to go back to your purpose and go back to your um, mission statement. So you can have just like a short mission statement and it reminds you kind of like sets the foundation for what we're doing today. So mine um, is I help spiritually mature women become earth angels to help them heal families, to help heal families. So that's basically it. So I need to know that for me. Okay. So you guys can decide what your statement is for yourself right, um, your purpose is, and then, you know, this all will make sense. Why you want to work, why you want to meet people, why you want to organize yourself. Okay. Um, any comments? Okay. Um, all right, so let's look at the different areas of our doTERRA business. Okay, so I've put it in six categories. The first one is about relationships, like business relationships or just regular relationships, whatever, um, and connections, relationships and connections. So this is a people business. So we really need to have good people skills. Um, and, you know, the other, the other area is just business in general, the idea of business. Sometimes people don't think of themselves as a businesswoman. Um, and, you know, therefore, they don't take their business seriously. And, you know, they don't know why, you know, this is happening, that they're not, not successful. The other category is money and finances, right? Because um, that's important too. And sometimes if we have money shame and all these uh, blocks, um, we're not going to let ourselves earn the money. Um, and then, you know, eventually you... Um, Okay, well, now let's just do this first. The other, uh, the fifth thing is your purpose and your vision. So are you clear in your purpose? Are you clear in your vision? And then um, the other part is your influence, your leadership and influence. Do you believe that you're a leader? That, um, you know, you have this power to influence people. And the last part of this is your personal life um, and your family. So, you know, because it's a holistic approach that we have. Um, yes, you're you know, finding blocks about business, but sometimes in our subconscious, it's either or. So I, I remember a saying where people say, you know, if you're successful in business, that means your family's suffering. You know, there's sometimes people have this false belief. Um, you know, if you're a successful businesswoman, that means you must not be a successful mother, right? And that's, that's a big lie. Um, so sometimes we have to like sit down and just work that one out. Okay. So ladies, we're going to go with the first category first. Okay. So I'm going to say a few things. So if you guys know how to muscle test, you can go ahead and muscle test. Um, it's true or false for you. Okay. If it's true, um, it will be strong. If it's not, then it's weak to muscle test. Or you can feel it in your heart and feel that intuition. All right. So the first statement here is I am excellent at making friends and keeping friends. Test that. I'm excellent at making friends and keeping friends. Anybody get a weak response? Yeah. Okay. So write that one down. All right. And we'll, we'll sort that one out. Okay. If that's weak for you. Okay. Um, I am great at making connections with people. 
yeah, it's similar to the first one, but it's uh, slightly different. Like this is a heart connection. I'll just put that down, a heart connection. Okay, so anyone test weak for that? So when I look at people, okay, and I look at people, I, I'll tell you more about that later. I'm just going to have you test yourself and then we'll, we'll resolve it and see if we can resolve it together. Okay. I'm genuine and honest in my relationships. I'm genuine and honest in my relationships. So anybody get a week on that? Thumbs up for strong. Mm -hmm, good. Um, I attract the ideal avatars. Okay. Strong. Um, kind of sideways, <laughs> a little bit, yes, a little bit. All right, so we're going to pause here and talk about this a little bit. Okay, so I'm excellent at making friends and keeping friends. And so it could be something from your past, like, you know, something from school years um, that you your, your brain says, oh, remember when you, you didn't have a lot of friends in school, right? Remember when people don't like you, right? But you're here now, this is you. So we need to go back to that child. What you want to do is go back to that child and say to her, you know, it's okay and resolve it. Okay, have gratitude for the experiences that she's had, right? So that, you know, here and now, you are um, a great friend maker, right? Um, and keeping friends, you know, what does that look like? Right, sometimes our subconscious says, if I have a lot of friends and I'm going to be so busy because I'm going to try and keep everyone happy. Um, you know, maybe not. So the keeping friends is just keeping that heart connection. Just you still love them. That's it. And when you love them, you will have this, you know, divine inspiration, what to do with them. You know, sometimes I'll text my friends, sometimes for months go by, I don't say anything. And then when I remember them, I'll say something, we're, we're back, we're, we're still good. We're still good. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, those true friends, you don't have to be, you know, making sure they're happy, making sure they're good, making sure you're feeding them. Um, you know, they'll always be there. All right. Um, you know, the heart connection. If I just am confident in myself, in, in not myself necessarily, but in, in God's confidence in me, right, and I feel my, my soul with his divine love, I can easily set myself aside, right? And then I can easily... Um, connect to the divine love and then look at people and find opportunities to love them. I look at people's eyes and look at their face and I just, in my head, I'm like, I love you. I love you. I mean, look for all the reasons why I love you. Right. And I don't have to say it out loud. And that's creepy. But if you just like, she's got, she's so pretty or she just has a beautiful spirit. I can feel her heart. Right. And then when I, when I feel that strength in my heart, I just kind of like push that energy out towards them, right? And then my hope is for them to receive that love because I can control how loving I am, right? I have that power. I don't have control over whether they like me back. And it really doesn't matter. Like God loves us first and then we love him. So why don't you love them first and hopefully they'll reciprocate, right? Right? Um, not for your own good, is for them to connect. That's all, right? And what this love means, it doesn't make you important, right? It doesn't make you the source of love to feed their souls. It gives them a sample of divine love. So my love for my friends is a sample of divine love. And once they connect to me, they're like, oh, juicy, juicy. Then hopefully they'll trust me more. And I'll say, hey, here's where you go to get more. Okay, and this is the source that you get and you'll never, 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 never thirst again. Okay, so that's how I visualize it. 
right? If I can, you know, easily set myself aside because I don't need them to validate me, make me important, whatever. And I just, you know, forward that love onto them. It's a lot easier for them to kind of love me. So, you know, I am genuine and honest in my relationships. You need to decide that that's you. You need to make that decision. You cannot let other people make that decision for you. You can't wait until someone says, yeah, you are honest. Yeah, you are. You talk to God and say, Heavenly Father, am I genuine? Am I a genuine friend? Am I an honest friend? And if he says, yes, you are, then you are sure of it. And you don't give people power to tell you that yes or no. Because when you are unsure, then you give them power to control that. Does that make sense? So you need to be sure, sure now. Okay. So I am sure that I'm a genuine, honest person. And if somebody says, oh, she's in this for the money, she's in this whatever. And I'm like, meh, you're lost. But I truly love you. And I truly love these people. And I truly know what I'm doing is, is genuine and is good. You know, and sorry, sorry that you see me through your dark lenses, right? So, but when you're firm though, they start to go, oh, maybe she's right. <laughs> maybe she's a good person, right? You need to be firm and then they will adjust. What do you think? that helpful okay so it's just a matter of making decisions uh you know using your power and then connecting to the divine love okay and knowing your role so i attract i the ideal avatars okay so in your head um imagine you you know people are like attracts like success attracts success if you believe that you're successful you believe that you have um you know faith and you have more light you're going to attract that in people yeah so imagine people that are you know in a room in your head just imagine that um you are going to naturally attract them imagine people online you know you will naturally attract them the more you put yourself out there for other people to to see it'll it'll come back easy so when, um, you know, you post something just from your heart because you, you're you looking for your avatar, right? If they resonate with you and then they connect and you can have a conversation online, you know, if you can see that, then you can, you know, be convinced of um, the ability to attract them. At the same time, you want to visualize um, you repelling the non-avatars. And you have to be okay with people going, oh, I don't know if I like her. She's too positive or whatever. <laughs> yeah. You gotta be okay with people going, nah, she's not, you know, someone that I would wanna hang out with. And you're like, that's fine. <laughs> what do you think about that, guys? A little bit stricter? Because then we don't attract all of these people that are non-avatars and needy and, and they're not going to be our companions. They, they just can't move forward with us. It's just not right. Any comments? Okay. The other thing that you can muscle test is I have a loving community. Yeah. I have a loving community. So when you attract people, what are you going to do with them? <laughs> you want to, to add them to a community. You want to visualize them participating in your community, right? Hey, I want to teach a class too, Jade, or hey, I want to help people heal too. I want to do those oil things. You know, you just have to visualize what you want to do with your people when you attract your people. Because they come to the party and they're like, what now? <laughs> you have to know what to do next. Okay. So if you visualize what you want to do with them, that's great. And of course, when you know this, you'll know who your non-avatars are. Okay. So when you come together and you're crying and you're hugging, <clears throat> you come to meetings, um, you know, and you're, you're healing, you're reading books, 
<clears throat> sorry. But the non-avatar was like, yeah, I don't know how to log on a computer. Or me, I don't want to cry. I don't want people to see my feelings and stuff. You know, then you go, that's fine. Yeah. She's my non-avatar. That's okay, right? Um, does that make sense? So if we say yes to everybody, we're actually, you know, not really talking to anybody. So we imagine like, this is what I want to do with my friends. What else do you want to do with your community, ladies? Plenty of things in my head. Want to travel together. I was going to say go on trips. Yes, sourcing trips. Go serve. Yeah, go serve, go together. Yeah retreats and you know even if we're at a convention we're like let's shop together let's eat together it's just stuff we want to do together oh, so I think that we had that the leadership retreat where Ashley and Debbie came with me like the second day like we actually didn't go we did go but we skipped it and we went shopping for most of that day I mean doTERRA shopping the marketplace but it was so fun and that was what we needed <laughs> Obviously, we didn't need to hang out and, you know, listen to all the other talks, but, you know, we're right there with each other. So if you can visualize what you're going to do with the community, you'll have more confidence. So when people join you, do you panic? You're like, oh, okay, what do we do? What do we do? Because I feel responsible for everyone. Ah. Okay, let's not do that. All right, so I have confidence and faith in others. Okay, so ask yourself that question. Do you have confidence and faith in others? In my mind, this is how I, I believe that. I connected to God. God talked to me. He tells me stuff. So, uh, of course, he's going to connect to my friends and tell my friends stuff. And, you know, my friends will get the same info and we'll come together and we're like, yeah, we, had, we, we got the same downloads. We're having the same experiences, um, same lessons. So I trust that God knows what he's doing, right? That, um, you know, he will help my friends just like he helped me. But when people don't have the faith and the trust and the confidence in their own divinity, in their own ability, they will pass it on to others. They'll teach others fear and they'll teach others to lack confidence. Yeah. So, um, you know, an example is my daughter. She wants to be, she's only 15, right? So she's got years. She wants to be a doctor. Um, so this summer, she's going to this university for a week and just studying all these doctor things. Anyways, um, but not only does she want to be a doctor, she wants to do um, just uh, studies and research to merge like the energy balancing side with, you know, the medical side. So if people um, that she's doing, she, you know, is booking in for heart surgery, she wants to do heart surgery. Um, you know, she wants to talk to them about opening the hearts, softening the hearts, and connecting the hearts to God and all of these things. She wants to do some research and want to make all that connection, right, as a doctor. And I'm like, brilliant, good idea. I'm like fully supportive of it, right? So I was telling these other people um, about that and they're like, oh, that's really tough. Oh, you know, there's all these obstacles and, you know, the medical field is this way and this way and this way. And you know, when I was done with that conversation with them, I thought to myself, nah. I teach my girls faith so I'm like yeah go for it let's do it let's figure that one out not like how do you know how tough the medical world is you know that's teaching her fear so why why how does that help right I am confident that God's going to help her figure it out if she thinks she wants to do that who am I to hold her back yeah so for us when your friends say I need to I want to do this and I want to do that I want to be blue diamond I want to be what doesn't matter just you know let's do it i believe in you i know if you can connect to god you can do it right because i've experienced that connection to god so unless you have let yourself experience that you know it's really hard for you to have confidence and faith in others yeah okay the muscle test this i'm a good friend to others i'm a good friend to others feel it in your heart muscle test it i'm a good friend to others good yeah you know if you're a good friend to yourself that's sufficient okay um or i don't take things personally or easily get offended i've already decided that i don't yeah 
And so one lady, she was like saying something and I was like teasing myself, um, you know, along with it. And she's like, oh, did I offend you? I'm like, no, I'm just playing along. I'm teasing. Because um, I said, look, you can't offend me. I won't choose it. And how about this? Um, people are attracted to me. Let's test that. Doesn't make you prideful, doesn't make you boastful. Do you let do you let others be attracted to you? They're like, you've got light, you've got joy, you've got something. I want to be with you, your friend. Yeah. Okay. Anyone have anything else to say about the friendship and connections? I can think of one more thing. Um, it's about having a lot of friends. So I can handle having a ton of friends. I am testing weak on like the last three questions. <laughs> like, what is that about? Yeah, I'm with you, Debbie. Yeah, it's not <laughs> believing that we can, eh? It's, it's a bit of a... Yeah. Just needs a little work. <laughs> yeah, just a little work there. So you can, you know, find out if it's something generational. Um, but are you fully accepting of yourself? If you fully accept yourself, then you're allowing yourself to be attractive. And that doesn't mean everyone's going to be attractive. Remember, we're going to actually repel um, people who are our non-avatars. If you, you're yourself, right, the non-avatars will like, ugh, no way, that's not my friend. And you're like, thank you, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, you know, you have to sit down and say, I'm okay with these deep and meaningful conversations. That's all about me. You know, I like this stuff. Um, and that's, that's my jam. And, you know, I like this and this and this, I like lathering myself with oils. I like the routine. I like, you know, hanging out and building communities. I like serving. There, there are people out there that don't like any of those things. <laughs> and that's okay. They're allowed to do that. Right. But the right people, why don't we say the right people are attracted to me? Yeah. And we don't take things, um, you know, personally, and we don't take offense, right? Because we have sufficient love and acceptance of ourselves. If people say, oh, oil's poo poo, right? Um, what you're doing is crazy, crazy. You'd be like, that's okay. I have my blinders on. I know what I'm doing and I'm looking for my soul sisters and I'm building my community. Right, you, you have your own lenses and you feel free to, to see the world through those lenses, however you want to see it. But I like to do this and I'm going to stick with my, um, you know, path. So for you, just allow people to have, be tolerant of yourself and be tolerant of other people's opinions. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Yeah. Okay, any of these things uh, that we mentioned, um, does it still, still need work? Anybody still need help there? I'll give you the whole document, but for now we'll, we'll talk about um, one thing at a time. Okay, so again, like this is a relationship business that so we have um, a ton of good, strong relationships our business will thrive. Okay, so I can handle a ton of friends because you're not managing people's emotions. You're going to serve them when the Lord wants you to serve them, connect to them when the Lord wants you to connect to them. Um, and you probably want to find evidence of the perfect friends that you have. So like friends that you can trust, friends that um, you don't have to chat with every day, but when you do, you're connected and you're happy. You read each other's minds. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so we're going to move on. Okay. So the other thing too is business, the idea of business, 
all right, um, skills and practices. So let's decide that business comes easily and it's natural to me. Business comes easily and naturally to me. I'm a good businesswoman. I'm a no-nonsense businesswoman. Muscle test that. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So in a business, <clears throat> think of Heavenly Father as your partner. They say, I believe that God and angels help me out. <laughs> yeah. So it could be, actually, it could be, um, you know, in our head, we think business is complicated if we're smart people. <laughs> right. But no, you remember we talked about you being intelligent. Right. I think, I think mine is actually not necessarily the intelligent part. I think it's, it feels like not being authentic. Like if I'm, if I'm trying to, if I'm trying, I feel like I'm trying, like, that's something that's a false belief I have is I feel like uh -huh. that instead of seeing it as I'm trying to love and help you, I feel as that it's me trying to push my intention uh -huh. or sell you. To me, oh. that's what mine is. That's yeah. what I think. So that's the, I'm not genuine and honest. Yeah. So business, so the association with the word business is that, um, you know, you, you're pushing your intention onto people. So change the word business to maybe mission, right? Because it's the same thing really to me. Because <laughs> if you're on a ministry, that's your business. Yeah, the business of, this is the labor of love. Yeah, and even just the word business is just busyness. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, what am I busy doing? Yeah. And that is my mission. And yeah. I feel like if it's that, then it does feel different. Yeah, so if you're, yeah, just make a different association or meaning to the word business. Um, anxiously engaged in good work. That's what it is. But now we're going to say we're excitedly engaged in the good work. Yeah. And then to be really focused and um, putting the blinders on and ignoring the rest and just staying in your lane. Yeah. Okay. So um, I believe that God and angels are helping me out in my business, right? I am confident and successful every day. Remember, confident and successful attracts confident and successful. Successful people attract successful. If you come across as you're successful, You'll, you'll attract more people, okay? So you got that strong, anybody got a week? So redefine your success. I like to say, you know, if I share my um, inspiration um, with people the way I feel like I need to, um, then I'm successful. So it's not about the outcome otherwise it'll never be enough so you hit this rank and you're like oh the next rank and you hit this whatever and you keep on wanting more and it will never be have an end but if you decide that success means i open my mouth and i speak out of inspiration and i inspire people every day something like that then that success i must i'm a walking success that's me every day you come home you're like yay i did it today so for me, even when I'm serving people, giving them the oils that they that I feel strongly that they need, I'm a success. And whether they take it or not, whether they heal or not, that's not my business. It's their business with God and their faith. Okay. How about I have the skills to be self-motivated? Because this, if you're the CEO of your business, you are you confident that you can you know, pep yourself up because, you know, you are hiring you in your business. So don't fire yourself. <laughs> All right. Okay, good. I'll just speak up if you um, test the week. Okay, maybe we can explore it together. Um, I am fully responsible for my success. So taking the full responsibility. If you say yes to that, 
that means you know it's easier for you to jump in and then look at your team and not say well so and so is not doing stuff and therefore i'm not successful no blaming i own my business 100 percent just strongly yes mm -hmm. how about this i am an achiever and i grow at my own pace Sometimes we might say, well, here's my deadline. If I didn't hit that deadline, then I didn't achieve or I'm not a success. But really, you know, God will tell you when to do what and, you know, when you should. For me, the first couple of years, I just felt like only if I was just hit the rank every year, hit the rank, come to convention, walk every time. And then when I um, became diamond, he says, well, you know, you're good, pause and do this other work. And at first I was like, oh, but if I'm not ranking, then I'm not good enough. And I had to work through that. And then now I'm like, yeah, I'll hit the next rank. When I hit the next rank, it doesn't make me less. I'm already very successful every day that I shared, you know, this light and that message to the world. I need to hear that. Thanks, Jade. Yeah. So that's, I feel like, sorry, go I have to hear Susanna. Yeah, I've, like I've run into so many people that I feel, you know, um, it's like my foundation. I have to make the foundation solid and strong first. <clears throat> and I guess I'm still learning so much. And sometimes, you know, I think, oh, my goodness, I'm failing. Like I haven't ranked what I would have hoped to, but yeah. I feel there's that false belief. But at the same time, I actually am building a foundation. I feel that is really important first. Yep. And. Yeah, so I've been feeling a little bit like, oh, my goodness, like yeah. I would have thought I'd be somewhere else right now, but it's like, no, like I'm really building that yeah. foundation first and the right people um, at my own pace. So I'm still learning a yeah. lot and sometimes I feel like that false belief, who do you think you are, like, you know, um, you don't know enough. Yeah. Um, and it just get discouraged. So mm -hmm. loved that. Thank you. Good. You are not your rank, okay? Just we really need to unattach ourselves because that's that's the downside of network marketing. When you go to conventions and stuff, it's all about the ranks and you, you just feel that ugh, that feeling of uh, measuring, you know, who's good and who's better and who's best. None of that. Just for our team, let's just put our blinders on and just trust that everyone is at the level that they're at because they need to be there. Right. I said that to one of the ladies and she got offended. Um, I said, you know, she's like, why am I not, you know, presidential already, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, you, you need to be where you are right now for the lessons that you need to learn. And, and until you learn those lessons, you know, maybe you're not going to move up until you kind of figure stuff out. And that's okay because it's not about the rank. It's not about, that's not a measure of success. The measure of success is have you learned and grown and really, you know, surrendered. I asked this lady, she, I said, can you just like surrender your business? If Heavenly Father asked you to, to give it up right now, right? Would you? And she's like, no, I have a hard time. I work so hard and I put so much effort into it, you right. know, because she was attaching her happiness um, and her measure to, to the business. And, you know, no, no, you are not your rank. And so when you see each other as not their rank either, right, then, you know, it liberates you too. <clears throat> Yeah, so it's just another, um, you know, stage, that's all. Okay, so I am equal, I'm equally deserving of success as everyone else. <clears throat> I'm equally deserving of success. But yes for that. Yeah, so sometimes in our self-conscious, we're like, other people are better than me. So they deserve success and I am undeserving. So therefore, you know, I need to be behind. What do you think? You got strong? Everyone got strong on that? Yep, I believe I um, can solve anything with God's help. So sometimes when we think of business, um, you think of problems and, you know, obstacles and stuff. And so we're like, oh, you know, business is hard. But 
um, if you think of it as easy and natural, then it's not hard. And then my father will help me solve the next thing. That's okay. Okay, and the last thing here, <clears throat> and tell me if you think we need to add anything too. The next thing here is, I have all that it takes to be successful in this doTERRA business. I have all that it takes. So you're not missing out or you're missing anything. That was my big thing, right? I just thought, oh, maybe I don't know something. Maybe this, maybe that. And the more I talk to people, the more I'm convinced that Heavenly Father's given me everything I need, right? I'm not missing out that I would be successful in the right time. Yeah, I had a lady like, when she started this business, she's like, oh, Jade, I'm not a business person. So she enrolled in a master degree for business management. And then she paused to do her business until she, yeah, it's been a couple of years, I think she's still doing it. Yeah, so really? <laughs> What if you connect to Heavenly Father and he teaches you, you know, every step of the way? How about that? Well, maybe if he asks you to go do a course, then do it. But uh, yeah, it's not about how much you know. But you have all of it, all what it takes, because really it takes a heart that is willing to create relationships with people. Okay, what do you guys think about that? Any comments there? Do you believe that you have all that it takes to be successful in this business? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I've written all this down and I'll send it to you guys. But um, the next thing here is money and finances. I am great with money. Money likes me. So I well test that. Money comes to me in all directions. I can easily handle large amounts of money. One girl, she hit silver and she got over a thousand five hundred dollars check. And she says that she felt kind of sick because she's never had that much money come in at once. <laughs> so I was like, well, okay, that's one way to repel money, right? Because in, in her head, it's like nauseating. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So maybe rich people are nauseating to her, right? Because they must be bad. Okay, so I'm okay charging people money. I... <laughs> Sandra, no, I'm okay taking money from people. No. So what's the hang up there, Sandra? You tell me. I am pretty much yes and everything. <laughs> I, I uh, wasn't very strong on question number three. Yeah. And this comes pretty obvious even in my hands. I don't know. Um, I don't have actually a problem with the business. I love it. I have no problem with that. I have no problem educating people. No problem when they order large amounts of oils and to help themselves. But so many people, Jade, I probably need a session with you ask me, can I pay you for your service? And I go, no, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> they always ask, can I pay you? Can you pay you for the session? And I, and they feel quite uncomfortable. One, one friend literally came up to me yesterday and she said, look, Sandra, it would be really good and liberating for everyone if we could pay for what you do. Mm -hmm. And if they're that close, I feel I can't. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, when you take money from people, you're thinking that um, it, they're now less, you know, like less, less money. They will have less now. But if you think of it as like water, it recycles. Mm -hmm. so money will keep, when they have a void, you know, money will come in and, and it'll, they will get that money back. 
but sometimes I feel like I need people to pay to create an opening for new healing, right? And when people are unwilling to pay, um, I feel like their cup is full and there's no room to, to change and heal. Mm -hmm. So I have to fit, convince myself that God's going to take care of them. What they're doing when they pay, they're like making space for newness and they're just moving that water, that energy over to me. And for me, I'm, it's not going to stop here, right? You know, I'm going to be using it for good too. So good money can come into good people's hands and I can manage it and be a good steward of this good money. So I'll just say thank you for, you know, it's like if you think of it different, if you think of it like bread, okay? They, they mm -hmm. give you bread, they're thanking them for bread and then you use it a little bit and then you pass it on and it's just ever giving, ever giving. So money is not scarce. So when you take from people now, they're poorer and they're less, you know, that's not true because God will continue to pour into their pockets, right? So in my head, when someone says, oh, Jade, I can't afford da da da, da. one lady, we said, hey, um, you know, the cleanse and restore kit is $250, you know, to pray to God and ask him for that, right? For me, I'm helping create a faith promoting opportunity for her, right? For me, I'm like, oh, I feel sorry for you. Um, let me give you one little drop of lemon oil and and wait until you get money for it. No, I wanted to create. I want her to learn how to connect to God and create. So I'm like, well, 250, go talk to God about that and, you know, open up the heavens for that. And she did, you know, she got that money. All right. So we can be the instrument to help people, you know, get that um, faith. And so like my friend with her house, she calls it the doTERRA house because she's like, Jade, I would love, you know, to have, you know, 1400 extra every month you know, so I can pay for my mortgage, right? Um, you know, and get into a house. And I said, when do you want to get into it? Four months. I'm like, let's do it, right? So that is not greedy. That's not bad. That is faith promoting. So we did. Midnight on the fourth month, she hit the silver rank. And then from then on, <clears throat> doTERRA paid for her mortgage, okay? So... It's okay to take money from people. And for you, is it okay for you to give money to people? Yes. Yeah. And because you're grateful. So if you say, <clears throat> I give people an opportunity to give, right? Because you, you were the giver before, but now I give people the opportunity to give. Um, yes. Yeah. So test again, I'm okay charging people money and I'm okay taking money from people. It is. It's okay. Yay, it's okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And look, sometimes people think money equals love. Money doesn't mean love. Money is neutral. Right, so if, if so-and-so gives it to me for free, that means she loves me because she's taking you know, my money, that means she doesn't love me, right? Mm -hmm. They have this kind of warped kind of thing. But for me, I'm like, if you're not gonna sacrifice some energy, you're not gonna open up to receiving. Your cup is full. Yeah. Because this is about you thinking about other people, right? And, and taking care of them. Yeah. Uh, anyone want to add anything to that? Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. We've got a, another. Well, let's go with um, one more thing and then we'll continue this next time we talk. Okay. All right. So the next one is leadership and influence. Okay. So remember the presidential diamond is about your influence and leadership. Right. So let's look at that. Um, I can inspire others daily. I can inspire others daily because, you know, if you want to be a leader, you, know, you, you lead and people, you know, come to you to have a taste, the sample of that divine light and divine love. So can you inspire people daily? If you meet them, if you text them, if you talk to them on the phone, everywhere, anytime that you have any sort of interaction with them, you inspire them. So anybody test week for that one? Yep, 
life. So all good. I inspire others daily. You just become that conduit, receive the divine light and pass that light on to somebody that you think might need it. People want to follow my lead. People want to follow my lead. That kind of goes with a friendship one. But people want to follow my lead. Yeah. Anybody get a strong? Yeah, everybody? Yep, good. Anyone got a week? Okay. So the other thing about being a leader, you when you're out there, people see all your mistakes, right? So it's safe for me to make mistakes. <laughs> so when you're just you, is it okay? What if I lead people wrong? Well, what if I do? Is it okay? It's okay. I'll try to fix it. Right. Um, I am a strong leader and a trailblazer. I'm a strong leader. And the leader doesn't have to know all the answers. And the leader just needs to have a connection to the divine. And you say, well, let, let me pray on that. Let me check on that. Okay. Um, I make great choices. I admit my mistakes. I continue to inspire others to be better. Right. So I'm the avatar I'm looking for. So you want people like you to follow you. Anything you guys want to talk about in this area? I'm working on believing that I'm the avatar <laughs> that I want. Yeah, I want more of. Uh -huh. <laughs> Work in progress. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's true. We need to keep it up. Yep. All right. So one more. Let's do one more. Um, so this one, should we do this one? We should do this one. Okay. So uh, your purpose and vision. That's the next one to do. I'm fiercely loyal to my dreams and goals. I'm fiercely loyal to my dreams and goals. I dream big dreams. Right, so if you want to do this business well, sometimes you know you have to let yourself dream big dreams, right? I am focused on and committed to my purpose. So like I said, that's kind of like the blinders, put it in the blinders on and not just worried about what everyone else is doing. Strong. I know who I am and what I am here on earth to do. Yep. Okay. I can take my own path. We don't have to be the same as everybody else. Even within our group, we don't have to be the same. Okay. I create a powerful, loving community. Do you believe that? Do you believe you create a powerful and loving community? Teaching people to love each other. I am clear on what I want and am confident I will get it because I win everything. <laughs> you good with that? And I honor my heart compass. Anything else we need to add to visions and purpose? You good? Everyone's good with that? All right. So the last thing here is your personal life and family. So even though we're here, we have business, um, but we need to be well-rounded. So I give myself 
and my family plenty of quality and quantity time. Yeah. I know how to balance my family and work life. All right, I have a high standard of joy for myself and my family. You guys test strong for that. So as I achieve, I give permission for my children to achieve too. And my family supports me in my business. That's a tricky one. My family supports me in my business. So if we believe that the family doesn't support us, we'll continue to create that. When you believe that, you'll find ideas and things to, to do to help them support you. You know what they can do to support. Okay. So I will stop here, um, the recording, and then we'll have a conversation because I feel like it's easier this way.